One way to think about the Internet is like a vast empire, broken up into different domains, each with its own governing structure and culture. Some of these domains are carefully regulated with a totalitarian duke or baron, deciding what people can do and say, while other domains are like the Wild West, with very little governing structure and almost no oversight over what happens. Just by looking at an internet address, you can identify the domain it belongs to, and you may be able to make some important judgments about what you'll find there. A typical internet address, or URL, is broken into four parts. Top level domain, second level domain, subdomain, and page. In this comparison, the top level domain is like your city or state. Second level domain is your street address. And subdomain is your apartment number, if you have one and page is a particular room in your home or apartment. When taken together, these identifiers can point people directly to a particular place. The full URL represents any web page's full address on the Internet, just like your full address of your home includes your city, your state, and your street address. Top-level domains are the largest organizing structure on the Internet, like cities or states. Some of the most popular top-level domains include .com, .net, .org, .edu, .us, and .gov. But there are actually hundreds of these top-level domains, and they fall into two main categories, open and limited. Open domains like .com, .net, and .org are open to anyone. Like the Wild West, anyone can get their own address and post anything they want. You could register kingoffrance.wildwest and call yourself a monarch. Or you could register I am the smartest person in the world.wildwest and claim that your IQ is 100 times higher than Einstein's. You are basically free to do whatever you want, to say whatever you want, and to claim any authority you want. As long as you don't do anything illegal, no one will stop you. Limited domains, on the other hand, are more restricted. .edu domains, for instance, can only be owned by legitimate educational institutions. .gov domains can only be used by the U.S. government. And .mil domains can only be used by the U.S. military. This is important to realize because websites in open domains will sometimes masquerade as something they're not. One example would be federal student loan sites. Though the U.S. government provides information about federal loans on its own websites, which end in .gov, there are many websites that a user might think are legitimate government websites, but which are not. Rather, they are actually websites created by businesses to generate ad revenue, to collect personal information, or to sell a product to people who are looking for federal loans. Educational institutions are similar. To register a .edu domain, a potential website owner must prove that it is a legitimate educational institution. Thus, if you do a search for a specific degree, and the results provided to you include sites that end in .com, then you can be assured that they are not actually from educational institutions. By understanding how domains work, you can more quickly recognize whether a website is legitimate and also realize that most of what you see online is unregulated, like the Wild West. In the Wild Internet, you need to develop strategies for determining the accuracy and value of what you find and recognize that just because something is online does not mean that it's accurate.